Okay, so yesterday, both Chris and Julie asked me how the garden was doing. So I thought I'd make a little video just taking you guys all on a little tour of how things are because I haven't taken many photos lately. So we'll start over here. Lemon tree never made any lemons, unfortunately. It's just hard to get lemons to grow, I guess. This, oh, sorry, that is a weed, but we decided to let it grow. And look at these flowers it's made. Isn't that pretty? This is our chicken run. There's Vincy. Percy and Howard are in the coop at the moment. And Flashy escaped. <laughs> this is the pomegranate that we planted together. It's got some flowers. Um, it had more flowers, but now the flowers are either turning into fruits or dying off. This one hopefully is going to become a fruit. Uh, these are some of our squashes that we planted. I believe these are calabacita squashes. Um, and then, let's see. Here we have what apparently is called a devil's claw. It makes these really crazy claw-shaped seed pods. Um, it's just totally a volunteer. We didn't plant that. There's my Christmas tree. Hi, Flashy. This is a volunteer sunflower. More volunteer sunflower. Now let's go into the garden. Dur -dur -dur. Put the gate back. Okay, so starting over here, we've got some little pots of stuff. This is, uh, we think it's either a squash or a pumpkin or melons because I planted pumpkins and melons in these pots. And this is a watermelon that we got from a seedling or, you know, just a, like a starter plant the other day. This is our patio tomato. Look at the tomatoes. Woo! Coming along. Uh, these are squashes. No, sorry, these are melons that I planted from seeds. This is another watermelon from a seedling. And then this is uh, a redbud tree that we got from like just a little branch starter thingy at the Austin Green City Festival last fall. And it's growing and it's exciting. Over here we've got sunflowers. They're gonna be, these are like snack sunflowers. Um, for the sunflower seeds and that is a black bean plant that just happened to start to grow and then these are bean plants that are going to be like string beans like green beans i'm very excited about them because they're going to get huge uh, this is our leftover kale we decided to keep uh, one alive just to see what it would do these are our strawberry plants um, they're pretty much done doing their strawberry thing for now, but we're hoping we can keep them alive. This one still has some strawberries growing. It kind of had a second birth or whatever, second round of flowers, which is kind of cool. Um, there's another watermelon starter seedling thing. This is a watermelon that we started from actually a seed, which is cool. Um, it's doing well. We thought it was maybe going to not make it, but it seems to be doing okay now. Uh, those are Malabar spinach, which are some of the only spinaches that can really grow in the summer, and they're around here anyway, and they're delicious. And they're cool because they have these red stalks and bright green leaves. There's a few more over there. There's supposed to be a whole row, but they didn't all survive. There's Montezor. Say hi, Monty. Good Monty. Okay, and then here we have some chard, some Swiss chard. And back here is another strawberry plant. That one never made any strawberries, but it was pretty shaded. Here's our crazy amazing artichoke plant that we totally weren't expecting to make any artichokes this year, but it did, and we had a few of them. And then I think these were gonna let go to flower probably, because they're pretty small. Uh, this is a sage plant. It has lots of little pretty purple flowers that we decided to let grow to help keep bees around. Um, this is more Swiss chard. It's doing a little better now. We had carrots planted here, but uh, and the chard wasn't doing so well while the carrots were growing, but all the carrots are gone and eaten now. These are peppers. 
uh, here, okay, so the ones on the right here, those are like hot peppers. And then the ones on the left, those are going to be bell peppers. I can't remember what all we have. I think like Thai hot chili and cayenne and I can't remember what all. And that's a new other little pepper plant we got more recently, along with that little other little tiny one down there. These other ones we planted uh, longer ago. This is the chili piquin. It's left over from uh, last year, and it's doing well. It uh, survived, and it's making new little chilies. Yay! This is apparently known as the mother of all pep chili peppers. This is a mystery plant. It's just totally a volunteer. And I don't know what it is, and I love it. It's just got these amazing flowers that kind of have this kind of like gradient to them. I don't know. This, that's really picking it up very well, but... Yes, hi, Monty. Um, and uh, so, yes, continuing down. Here's the other side with the bell peppers that have yet to come. And then this is our weird, like... I think it's called double mint or something like that. It's a little strange. And then that's parsley. And that is normal peppermint. And it is delicious. We haven't actually found that much use for it yet. But it's really nice. Um, and then, yes, hi, Monty. And these are some onions here on either side of our asparagus. Um, so, yeah. There's the onions. Try to not shake this around quite so much. And then here's our asparagus growing up in the middle. And I'm, I'm totally excited about this because asparagus apparently you can't eat for like three years or until the third season because you have to let it get established. But like, look, that's, you know, there you go. That's the beginning of asparagus. And it's got these two different kinds of strands. There's like these fronds that are this darker green and then these things that look like asparagus spears, they turn into this brighter green stuff with these tiny flowers that are coming out. And then these are potatoes. Um, we're not totally sure how well they're doing because we read that that when they have flowers that indicates that there's potatoes growing down underneath. And we haven't had that many flowers, so we're not sure how many potatoes exactly we're going to have. Um, we'll see. And then here is, let's see if I can back up. This is our tomatoes, our tomato patch. Um, it's really taking off. It's exciting. Um, we have a bunch of different kinds of tomatoes. I won't try to name them all because I don't even know without looking at the tags, but here are some that are like cool little cherry tomatoes. Um, and then in with our t normal tomatoes, we have a tomatillo plant, which made these great little yellow flowers. And now they're starting to form these cool little globes. Let's see if I can find one. But hopefully, yeah, these are these will become what we know as tomatillos that like you know you'd buy in a store basically. We really wanted to try to make green salsa, like for breakfast tacos. So we tried to we're trying to grow tomatillos. Uh, more tomatoes, more tomatoes. Tomatoes from the other side. They're huge. Um, here's the herbal district. We have our chives. I guess the primary herbal district. There's other herbs over there that you already saw with the sage. This is Mexican mint marigold here. And I believe, I can't quite keep these straight, but I think this is thyme and I think that's marjoram and maybe more marjoram or oregano. I can't, I can't remember. And these, this is very exciting. I planted these from seed and I'm pretty sure that these are going to be giant pumpkins. They're supposed to get up to like 70 pounds. Um, so who knows if it'll actually, if any of these will make it that far or if they'll croak before then. But hopefully, wouldn't that be amazing? 70 pound uh, pumpkins. And this was cilantro that we decided to let go to see if we could get it to make coriander because did you know the spice coriander is, uh, is actually the seed of cilantro plants? I bet you didn't. 
Maybe you did. I don't know how common knowledge that is. But see those little tiny balls that are just starting to form? Those will be the coriander seeds. Pretty cool. Um, here we've got more oregano, I believe. And, oh yeah, see back here you can still see, that looks like cilantro, right? That's because it is cilantro. Amazing. Okay, and then here we planted with the tomatoes, not really realizing just how much the tomatoes would overshadow <laughs> them. We planted two basil plants, and they're doing well, despite, like, the fact that they're kind of getting totally crowded out. See, um, hopefully this one will survive despite the shadiness. Um, look, tomatoes, woo! I'm very excited about these tomatoes. These tomatoes are called dino eggs. Because they look like dino eggs. <laughs> Isn't that great? I love the way the tomatoes smell. Uh, more tomatoes, more tomatoes, more potatoes and onions. And then uh, these, uh, Andre planted some black-eyed peas um, to help soak up uh, the excess water from the soaker hose. We have a soaker hose running through the beds to help with watering. Um, and then between the beds, he planted these black-eyed peas because, you know, figured something should be using the water that's coming out of it there. Um, here we have our another big squash bed. Uh, theoretically here we have what's going to be cucumbers. Um, they're not growing too fast, so they may be getting completely overtaken by this plant, uh, which is, I believe, more of the calabacita squash. It's like a quick vining squash that is supposed to be resistant to the squash borer uh, pest, um, which has always been a real problem here. Um, and then next to that, we have what was a mystery squash that was growing in the compost pile. So Andre decided to plant it just to see what would happen. And not only has it been getting these amazing bright yellow flowers, but we're pretty sure that this might even be an acorn squash, which is my favorite kind. Because look at that. That's at the base of a, one of the flowers that existed. Looks like an acorn squash, right? Or like it could be, there's another one. So here's hoping that it survives and uh, that it is acorn squash and not like spaghetti squash. <laughs> um, here are some more onions. We have lots of onions. If you need any onions, let us know because we're going to have way more than we can eat. And this is a volunteer uh, tomato plant that popped up and we decided to let keep growing. Um, there's some of its volunteer tomatoes. Looks like little cherry tomatoes. We have cherry tomato, some little cherry tomato plants and then also some bigger, like, you know, more traditional solitary tomatoes growing too. Okay, and then here we have uh, a jalapeno plant. This is too close. Move over here. That is the jalapeno plant that uh, is left over from last year. It survived. And let's see if we can find any of the little jalapenos. It's, uh, that one's a little dried out now, but it is making jalapenos again, which is very cool. Because at one point we had a storm earlier and it, yes, hi hon. Um, and it totally knocked the jalapeno over and we thought it was done for, but Andre decided to stake it and see if it could survive. And it seems to have survived. There's some more flowers, so we got more, more jalapenos to come. Um, and then these are more pepper plants. Andre loves his peppers. And then more onions. <laughs> You're noticing a theme here. Lots of onions. And uh, also more asparagus. These I didn't stake. And I don't know if it's because I didn't stake them or because the sunlight is different or what, but they're not growing quite as vigorously as the other asparagus, which is interesting. And then here we have garlic. Uh, it's, it's almost ready to be pulled out and cured. Two different kinds. We have this giganto elephant garlic, and then also 
more like normal size garlic. <laughs> and then this over here is sort of kind of uh, kind of a bed that we use in kind of a bed that's just sort of its own thing. Because here's like some rosemary and some sage. And I think this is a crepe myrtle, although I haven't seen it bloom yet, I don't think. And more sage and more rosemary and I think another crepe myrtle. So all this mostly accomplishes is blocking the path. <laughs> but don't tell Andre I said that. And then here is a uh, blackberry. A blackberry vine that we planted and I'm very excited about this I hope it survives and it seems to be growing which is good but apparently you've got to get enough like cold weather days over a winter for it to actually make blackberries so fairly certain we're not gonna get any this year but maybe eventually and then this was a, a bat-faced plant that we just got and didn't plant for like two days two or three days and it just totally croaked so Alas, it was cool, but if it couldn't make those few days before we planted it, it's probably not going to make the whole summer, if it's anything like last summer. And then here, we have some milkweed plants that right now just look like stalks, because the uh, monarch caterpillars stripped them. These plants are incredible. Like, this is the second time this has happened. The The... Caterpillars come and just completely eat all the leaves, but somehow they survive nevertheless and then put out new leaves again. So like these are brand new leaves. It's very cool. I don't, I'm not quite sure how it does it unless it has enough chlorophyll just in the stalks to survive even after all of its leaves are gone. So, okay, what else is there to see? Um... Here is a pistachio tree, a Texas pistachio. Um, and then these trees we recently figured out are mulberries because they just started putting out like a few teeny tiny mulberries. Um, and also we noticed the leaves are just like this other enormous tree over here, which is this gigantic mulberry tree and it's amazing. And like all spring, it's just been covered in these mulberries and it's pulled in so many different kinds of birds and also we can eat the mulberries too, which is cool, but we've seen like starlings and cardinals and mockingbirds and blue jays and just like, and even some I didn't even recognize. Just all, all kinds of birds. It's really neat. And I'm going to see if I can hop over the fence here without totally killing myself. Okay, all right. So onwards, that's the compost pile. Very exciting and pretty, I know. Um, this tree, I can't remember what kind of tree this is. Um, these are some wildflowers that Andre just pointed out to me this morning are from a wildflower packet that we planted last fall. And aren't they amazing? They're so cool. Anyway, I think they're really neat. And it's cool because there's like more little buds too. So hopefully we're gonna have a bunch of these over here. And these are volunteer sunflowers. Isn't that awesome? Um, that's another pomegranate tree. The flowers of pomegranates are so pretty if you've never seen them. Take a look. I had never seen them until uh, over here. Here's some. They're just like explosions of color. It's hard to get the camera to focus on them. It's like, they're too real. I don't know. Anyway, onwards. Here's the mulberry tree. Let's see if I can show you some mulberries. Here's a mulberry in, in progress. And here's the brush pile and the fire pit. Exciting. Um, another volunteer sunflower. Then over here we have the uh, mountain laurel we just planted, which hopefully will survive. We waited a little longer than we wanted to to plant it, but we just didn't have time. Um, cactus, peach tree, another peach tree. And that one's really making some peaches, which is cool. So I'll show you. Peaches, oh my gosh. 
And I didn't even know I liked peaches until Andre introduced me to them properly. But they're so good. And then lantana and another bigger peach tree. And what else? Oh, this is an oak tree that died. It's just been so dry. This one didn't make it, unfortunately. We're thinking maybe um, we'll replace it with that red bud. We might give the oak tree just a little longer to see if it does anything, but it looks like it's down for the count probably. And then over here we have some more sage. And then I don't know what this is called, some sort of long leafed plant, I don't know. And then this, uh, this is more rosemary and it is so good. It's a different kind of rosemary. Just, it smells and tastes amazing. And more lantana, another pomegranate tree. It's been really interesting. Like the pomegranates, I don't know, they just didn't get pollinated to the same extent as like some of our other fruit trees that I'll show you in a minute, hopefully. Um, and like, it's had lots of pretty flowers, but just not very many of them look like they're gonna turn into fruits. So what are you gonna do? And uh, there's the rain barrel, which is an important component of the garden. This is a rose bush that uh, has already made flowers and they're pretty much done now. See, there's a little bit of a remnant. Uh, back over here we have, oh dang, I can't quite remember. I think maybe this is loquat and that is, I don't remember, sorry. I'll have to ask Andre. Um, this is another rose plant that has already had its flowers and They've come and gone. And then out here, let's get this open. If we can. This is a little tricky. Out here in the front yard, we have more sage. And this, I can't quite remember what kind of tree this is, but look, it's making little fruits of some kind bunch of them actually. I'll have to get Andre to remind me what this is. And uh, I think this is another crepe myrtle. Back here we have some uh, grapevine.